and welcome to MicroStrategy's Mobile App Developer Academy. This is part two of the rebranding tutorial for the MicroStrategy app, configuring your application. In this part, I'm going to show you how to give the app a new logo, new display name, and prepackaged connectivity information. So first thing, open the Xcode IDE and load the MicroStrategy mobile project as we did in part one of this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build an iPhone application. However, these same instructions apply to any iPad application as well. So in order to build my iPhone application, I want to make sure that MicroStrategy Mobile iPhone is highlighted under Targets in the left navigation pane. The targets signify the different versions of the MicroStrategy app, iPhone and iPad. So once the iPhone target is highlighted, you should see the summary information for that target in the right hand pane. The first step is to change the bundle identifier for the application. The bundle identifier is the unique name that Apple uses to identify your application on a device or in the App Store. It's important to keep a common structure for naming all of your applications within your enterprise program. I won't go into why now, but you're going to have to trust me. The recommended naming convention is to start with the prefix com, then dot, your company name, then dot, your app name. Putting them all together, it will be com.companyname.appname. To give you an idea, MicroStrategy's two applications are named com.microstrategy.mstrmobile for iPhone and com.microstrategy.ipad for iPad. Notice the common prefix. For my app in this example, I named it com.mycompany.myapp, just for it to be clear. After renaming the app, we want to change the icons that are shown on every device. In the simulator, if you click Run, you can see that the icons shown are the MicroStrategy logos. For this example, we know we're not MicroStrategy, so we want to replace those with our own images. So we want to go now to the Summary tab where we initially change the name and go to the App Icons section. Right-click the images there to delete them. If you highlight the empty icon squares, a tooltip will show that informs you of the dimensions. If you don't already have an image ready, create one with the listed dimensions in Photoshop or another image editor. Once ready, simply open the images folder in the finder and drag and drop it into the appropriate square. You'll see that if the image has the right dimensions, then it will snap into place. If you also want an image for retina displays, simply double the dimensions of your normal display image and drag and drop that image into the retina display square. Now we want to repeat the same process for the launch images. Again, to get the image dimensions, simply hover over the empty boxes. Once you have the images available, just drag and drop them into their appropriate places. Now we can run the simulator again by pressing the Run button in the upper left corner. Once the simulator launches, press the Home button. If the app is still showing the MicroStrategy icon, it just means it's using some old data. Select iOS Simulator from the top menu and select Reset Content and Settings. This will clear out the old settings. Run again and make sure the launch image and icon are yours. Again, you may have to wait briefly while the simulator loads, but when the screen loads, it should be showing all of our new icons. So one thing you should notice at this point is that the icon has changed, but the label on the icon still says MicroStrategy. Since you're not MicroStrategy, the next thing we want to do is change the display name. The display name is the name shown under the app's icon on the device, not the bundle identifier that we changed previously. So we want to click the Info tab in Xcode, the one next to the Summary tab that we were dealing with before, and find the Bundle Display Name field. Change that to your desired display name. There isn't a character limit, but make sure the name will fit in the space under the icon so that it isn't automatically abbreviated for you. I chose my app as the name just to keep it general and short so that the full name can be displayed. Run the app again. If the change does not catch, then be sure to reset content and settings in the simulator as we did before. At this point, your app should have your icon, your launch image, and your display name all as you specified. However, although it now looks like your app, it still goes to the MicroStrategy demo environment when launched. In the next step, we will be pre-configuring your app to go to your environment instead of our demo environment. So to start, 
Go to your environment's mobile admin page. The path is your server slash MicroStrategy Mobile slash ASP slash admin dot ASPX on IIS. Once on the mobile admin page, select mobile configuration in the left hand navigation pane. I'm assuming that you already have a configuration set up. If not, see the mobile administration guide for the steps on creating a mobile configuration. Most importantly at this point, make sure that you set a custom home screen. Under the configuration, select home screen, then check display a custom home screen. After logging into your project, select the first document in your application and then click save. To configure the MicroStrategy App Store app previously, you would have generated a configuration link and emailed it to your devices. We're done with config links from now on, so forget that process. To get our configuration, we need to get the actual config.xml file off of our mobile server. Access your mobile server machine and navigate to the MicroStrategy install directory. On Windows with IIS, this path is c colon backslash program files x86 backslash microstrategy backslash mobile server ASPX backslash web hyphen INF backslash XML backslash mobile. The configuration files are the long strings of numbers and letters prefixed with mobile config. Take the most recently saved config. That's how we distinguish the one we just edited and transfer it to your Mac using email or a shared drive or a thumb drive, however you want to do it. Now back in Xcode, open the iPhone folder in the folder navigation pane and find the preferences.xml file. Delete that file by right clicking and selecting delete, then move it to the trash. It's the old connection information and we don't need it anymore. Now right click the iPhone folder and select add files. We want to add the mobile config file that we just transferred over to our Mac. Once you find that file, be sure to check Copy Items into Destination below the navigator and click Add. It should show up under the iPhone folder. If not, just drag and drop the file into that folder. Rename the file to preferences.xml so that the code will be able to recognize it as our connection information. Click Run again. If the app goes to the demo app still, Reset content and settings in the simulator and go to Product Clean in Xcode's top toolbar. This process will reset all the references and old stored data in Xcode and the simulator. Run again. You should now be directed to your application. Play around with it. It will function as normal in the simulator. Okay, is there more? Yes, one more step and it's an easy one, so just stick with me. We need to make a slight change to the app's URL scheme. The scheme is the protocol that URLs use to communicate with the application. It's important to change this so that people cannot errantly affect our app via the config link or a URL API call of some sort. To do this, go back to Xcode and select the Xcode project and the appropriate app target. In our case, it's the iPhone target. Navigate to the Info tab and expand the URL type section toward the bottom. Under URL schemes, change the name to whatever you want. I changed it to my app to make things simple to remember. All right, we're done. Your app should now have a new icon, a new display name, a new launch image, and prepackaged connectivity info that is pointed to your environment. Additionally, we changed the bundle identifier and the URL scheme so that our app can be properly identified. But now, how do we get my app onto devices? To see that, Go to part three, the next MATA course, Certificates, Provisioning, and Archiving. And that's a wrap for this MATA course on configuring your application.